بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نائن سیون ڈبل زیرو جون ٹوینٹی تھری پیپر ٹو ون ایس لیول بایولوجی سیکنڈ ویڈیو وچ ہیز کوشچن فور فائیو اینڈ سکس ناؤ دس از دا سیکنڈ ویڈیو سو وی ڈن دی فرسٹ تھری کوشچن دا فرسٹ ویڈیو ناؤ وی گو ڈو دا کوشچن فور فائیو اینڈ سکس کوشچن فور دا جین فار دی اینزائم کیٹلیز از آن کروموسوم الیون ان ہیومنس Explain the meaning of the term gene. What is a gene? Gene is a sequence of nucleotides or you can say a sequence of bases that is part of the DNA that codes for a polypeptide or you can say a protein or you can say an enzyme. So explain the meaning of the term gene. Sequence of bases, you could have said sequence of nucleotides that is part of DNA. codes for a polypeptide or a protein or an enzyme. Two enzymes, DNA polymerase and DNA ligase, are involved in the replication of DNA. Figure 4.1 shows the replication of part of human chromosomes 11 by DNA polymerase. It shows how the direction of synthesis of the new polynucleotides by DNA polymerase. You can say there's a leading strand and then there's a lagging strand. And the 5-3 direction is a leading strand and then the other 5-3 is going to be in pieces. So, If you need to revise that, your DNA replication, this is from the 2022 syllabus. Describe the roles of DNA polymerase and DNA ligase in the replication, in the replication of DNA. So addition of activated nucleotides, complementary base uh, pairing, forms phosphodiester bonds uh, between adjacent nucleotides, elongating the polynucleotide strand, Proofreading, which is the ability of the DNA polymerase, and the DNA ligase is going to join the Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand. And then forms the phosphodiester bounds between the fragments to complete the phosphate sugar backbone. So lots of points for DNA polymerase and DNA ligase. I must attempt both the DNA polymerase and ligase to gain the maximum marks. So DNA polymerase addition of activated nucleotides, complementary base pairing, forms phosphodiester bond, elongating the growing polynucleotide strand, proofreading ability of DNA polymerase. It checks that you know the bases are at the right complementary base pairing. Then DNA ligase joins the Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand and forms the phosphodiester bonds between the fragments to complete uh, the sugar phosphate backbone. Then another very direct question, state the name of the stage of interphase in a cell cycle when DNA replication occurs. Everybody knows it, that's the S phase. Now S phase stands for synthesis phase. So if you wrote S phase, that was also correct. If you said uh, synthesis phase, that was also correct. Uh, some of the students wrote it wrongly, S1 phase or S unqualified Well, that's all rubbish. I mean, if you wrote that, you really don't know your bio. And then you must be a changad if you are so pathetic in bio. Then coming to C part of the question. Figure 4.2 is a diagram of chromosome 11 at metaphase of mitosis. State the names and function of structures A and B. What was structure A was centromere. This is the site of attachment of the chromatids, chromatids to the spindle fibers. Or you can say holds the identical chromatids together. B is the spindle fibers. What is the role of spindle fibers? Or their microtubules. So they're separating the chromatids at the end of metaphase or at the start of anaphase. Movement of the chromatids or chromosomes to the opposite poles. So you have to give us the function of both of them. State the names and functions of structure A and B. So centromere holds uh, sister chromatids together. Or you could have said also site of attachment of the spindle fibers. For B it was the spindle fibers or you could have said microtubules separating the chromatids. Or you could have said movement of the chromosomes to the opposite poles. Then it says here now, uh, part two of the question, complete figure 4.3 to show what happens to chromosome 11 in anaphase so that the dotted nuclei are genetically identical. Cell membrane, and then they've shown you the centrioles, and they want you to complete the diagram, and it's a three marks. 
You see, uh, what you have to do is you have to draw the centromere. You can draw it in any way. This is the centromere, and then you show this because originally, you see, if you see, this was like this. But now what is going to happen is that this is going to be like this. Because it's going to be pulled up from here. And these two are going to be bent. So this is this area. And this is this area. And this is the centriole which I'm going to shade it. So that's why I've drawn it like this here. And then this here. And this here. And then this here. And this goes here like this. And this would be the spindle fibers attached to the centromere. So I've drawn this as the centromere. The spindle fibers attached to the center. Two separate chromatids. Chromatids attached to spindle with fibers down to the poles. Single chromatid drawn U-shaped or V-shaped pointing towards the pole and centromeres drawn in both chromatids. So if you've drawn the centromere here, this is the centromere here, this is the centromere here. Then coming to question number five, five figure 5.1 5 is a longitudinal section of a capillary in muscle tissues as viewed with a transmission electron microscope. <clears throat> Magnification is 2000. State the evidence visible in figure 5.1 that identifies the cells inside the capillary as red blood cells. Well, how are they red blood cells? There's no nucleus. There are no organelles, uniform appearance or homogeneous cytoplasm. Some are biconcave shape and same width and size as the lumen of the capillary. So this is, these are the points that you could have given me because it says state the evidence visible in figure 5.1. Then it says explain how the structure of the capillary wall is related to its function. Is one cell thick, one to two micrometer in thickness. It has got these endothelium or you can say endothelial cells so short distance for diffusion, then there are endothelial pores, or these are also called fenestrations or pores or gaps between or within the endothelial cells for passage of small molecules to pass from the plasma into the tissue fluid. Or even phagocytosis can move out. And phagocytosis or pinocytosis across the endothelial cells. So for part A, no nucleus, no organelle, some are biconcave shaped and same size as the lumen of the capillary. And then coming to explain how the structure of the capillary wall is related to its function. Do not say cell wall. There's nothing to do with the cell wall. The capillary wall is made of a one cell thick uh, wall. So capillary wall is one cell thick, is made of the endothelial cells and there's short distance for diffusion. Then there's the endothelial pores which allow small molecules to pass from the plasma or from the tissue fluid into the plasma or for the plasma into the tissue fluid. So these was three marks and there are about five mark scheme points. And C part of the question figure 5.2 is a diagram showing some of the events that occur as blood flows through a capillary in a respiring tissue. So cells of the respiring tissue here, carbon dioxide, oxygen going in, carbon dioxide coming out, carbon dioxide entering the blood, and then carbon dioxide and water combining in the presence of carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid, H2CO3 dissociates into H positive and HCO3 negative ions. HCO3 negative ions diffuse out, oxygen comes out, oxygen goes into the, so the oxygen is now leaving, carbon dioxide is entering. So this is what is happening through a capillary in a respiring tissue. So more carbon dioxide being produced, more oxygen being used for aerobic respiration. So cells of the respiring tissue you got on both sides. An increase in respiration results in an increase in the carbon dioxide concentration in the blood and the release of more oxygen from red blood cells to tissues. Explain how an increase in CO2 in the blood leads to a release of more oxygen from the red blood cells. And that's a four mark. We've got about 10 mark scheme points. More carbon dioxide diffuses into red blood cells. More carbonic acid formed. Now look at it in the diagram. More carbon dioxide, more carbonic acid formed by the carbonic anhydrase. Formation of more hydrogen ions. Why? Because more of these hydrogen ions. Hemoglobin has a higher affinity for hydrogen ions. So hemoglobin binds more hydrogen ions to form hemoglobinic acid. 
which is not shown in the diagram. And the hemo formation of hemoglobinic acid decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Hemoglobin releases more oxygen and carbon dioxide binds to the end terminal of the globin alpha chain and beta chains forms carb amino hemoglobin. Please do not say carboxy hemoglobin. That's rubbish. That's carbon monoxide. And then the allosteric effect which change in the tertiary structure uh, in oxyhemoglobin causes the release of more and more oxygen. So lots of mark scheme points and you had to give me not many that any there were 10 mark scheme points you could have given me any four out of these. So more carbon dioxide diffuses into red blood cells. More carbonic acid formed by carbonic anhydrase. Formation of more hydrogen ions. Why? Because the carbonic acid dissociates into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. Hemoglobin has a higher affinity for hydrogen. So hemoglobin now again re rekindles this relationship with the hydrogen. So hemoglobin keeps on changing its uh, dosti with hydrogen and oxygen. But it has a higher dosti with hydrogen, higher, more friendship with hydrogen. So when more hydrogen is available, then it gives oxygen is given up. So the, the best friend oxygen is given up and another best friend hydrogen is now taken uh, into his friendship. So hemoglobin binds more hydrogen ions to form hemoglobinic acid. HHB is homo hemoglobinic acid. So it decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So the hemoglobin oxygen friendship finishes off and hemoglobin releases more oxygen. So you can make a little story out of it and then you can also learn it like that. That's a very easy way of learning it. Then we come to the last part of the question. Chloride ions are a constituent of blood plasma. The concentration of chloride ions in the plasma of deoxygenated blood is between two to four millimoles DM, millimoles DM cube lower than in the plasma of oxygenated blood. Explain why the concentration of chloride ions in the blood plasma of deoxygenated blood is lower than the plasma of oxygen. It's simple. The hydrogen and carbonate ions pass out of the red blood cells into the plasma. Chloride ions pass from the plasma into the red blood cells to replace these negatively charged ions. This is called the chloride shift. And chloride ion channels pass, chloride ions pass through channel proteins by facilitated diffusion. So two marks and we've got about five mark scheme points. So bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate or HCO3 negative pass out of the red blood cells. Chloride ions pass into the red blood cells to replace the negatively charged ions. This is called the chloride shift and the chloride ions pass through channel proteins by facilitated diffusion. Figure 6.1 is a diagram showing the passage of water through the tissues of a flowering plant from the soil to the atmosphere. The arrows show the direction of water movement. So here we have the leaf and then here we have a diagram of the root. Soil particles X, Y. The structure labeled X is part of the symplast pathway. State the name of structure S. What is structure X? Plasma does matter. Plasmodesma. Then the structure labeled Y in the cell wall is a barrier to the apoplast pathway. State the name of structure Y. Casparian strip. So the structure labeled vial is a barrier to the apoplast. That's the Casparian strip and suberin is deposited in that. And that forms, you do not get any marks for suberin or endodermis. The word is Casparian strip, which should have got you a mark for that. With reference to figure 6.1, complete the statements about the movement of water in the flowering part. Water moves from the soil solution to the cytoplasm of the root hair cells by osmosis. Water moves from the xylem in the root to the leaf by, you can say, transpiration pull or cohesion tension.
transpiration pull. Then water moves from the mesophyll cell walls to the intercellular air spaces by evaporation. It just you've got uh, you just wash your hair. Your hair is the uh, water is in the form of a liquid on your hair with a hair dryer. When you dry it, the liquid water becomes water vapor and escapes into the atmosphere. Water vapor moves from intercellular air spaces to the atmosphere outside the leaf by diffusion. There's four marks, uh, not a lot of marks for this. Four marks for the C part, and then one mark for the B, and one mark for, so total six marks. And this completes this paper, and I hope this is helpful to you all. Uh, please do leave your comments, and please do let me know how I can help you more with your upcoming November exam, and best of luck and best wishes.